Hello, happy campers. Hi. I'm Spike. I'm Chris. And yep. we are still geeking out. According on Sunday, August 6, 2023, it is... It has been an eventful couple of weeks, but technical issues cutting off my argument that Barbie was actually a satire of the feminine... And it turns out a bunch of people actually agreed with me. So I didn't even have to actually put the argument out there. So there we go. Yep, you're welcome. Chris still hates hated the movie, though. That's all right. I, I hate Barbie, too. But yeah. It's got legs, though. It's doing pretty well. Of course it's got legs. It's because Barbie. I lied. You lied to people. That's the reason. <laughs> They don't, they don't show that stuff in the trailers, so everybody's like, oh, I want to go see Barbie because it looks fun and all that stuff. It's just an it? excuse to wear pink, allegedly. that's the Pink is the color of 2023. So, so yeah. Cancer Month is... We'll see how. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, July's done. We're in August now, and it's we have a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie to talk about that we both actually saw. I've got thoughts, and this one I actually saw the Haunted Mansion. He's one of the few who actually saw Disney's new Haunted Mansion. And that's a shame because it's really good. Okay, you know what? I'll save that. I'll save that. Sorry, I almost skipped that. I've got points on that, too. We'll get to that. For right now, we've got a few newsy things to talk about, like (laughs) Disney is poison, apparently. But uh, aside from that... Apparently, Warner Brothers has saved about a hundred million dollars so far with this, with the between the writer strike and the actor strike. <clears throat> and somebody told you that's why the studios were doing this to begin with. Can't imagine who it was, but I just need a shirt that says "I told you." Not even "I told you so." I told you. Here's the thing. There's a difference, though, in doing things the smart way and doing things just oh, this will make money. So let's just hire a bunch of writers and stuff. Okay? And nothing against the writers, but it's like kind of like Disney. It's like, do we really need a live action all based off of an anime, animated, you know, classic? Mm-hmm. No, we do not. They could save so much money right there. Hello? The Scuttlebutt has a the Scuttlebutt. Bob Iger, yes. Scuttlebutt. Bob Iger's really, really wanting to cancel No White and the Seven Dorks, but. I want he's, them to cancel kind of, it. The problem is he's still Disney is a publicly traded company and I think it's Tabitha Disney is like Walt's great 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 grand witch, whatever. Her and a few activists are still there on the board of directors for Disney and they're not letting them stop production. And apparently if it was up to Iger, they would have yanked the plug on these a long time ago. But that's what's running cover for for, for No White and for all the Star Wars remakes and all the Indiana Jones and Kathleen Kennedy still having a job. The, and the stuff. thing is, is that it's like, why do people think that this is smart? Because, like, I mean, for real, though, <coughs> like, for instance, everybody's hating on the woman that is playing uh, Snow White. And for good for good reasons, because she came out in an interview saying, well, this is not your typical Snow White. I mean, this is not the 1920s anymore. We're, you know, and just going on this big rant, and it's like, Snow White, like, against any type, like, I'm I'm confused here. Like, why are you bringing your politics into this Snow White movie? Like, what, what, what? So now she's getting hate for it, which, again, I understand because it's Snow White, for crying out loud. But at the same time, you got to sit there and wonder, like, as an actor, I'm not an actor, but if I was... If somebody said, hey, we want you to play Superman, and I'm going to be like, this, me? It's like, I don't think I would be a perfect person for Superman. Just like, you know, I'm just saying. Like, there's a bunch of movie roles now where they, they change this and they change that, and for some reason the actors are like... You know what? I know I'm going to get paid to do this lousy movie, but is it the right thing to do? 
I'm just saying. I'm, I'm doing the Grinch saying. grin right now because if you've ever seen how the Grinch stole Christmas and he gets that really big grin and it kind of curls up, this little hair curls out and everything, and he just gets the most evil looking grin. See, I, I, I should really put out for episode of Co of Chore of Duty 602. Remember, our top rated video now has 8,100 views, and it was episode, it was Chore of Duty episode 301. It's where I did reason and emotion, and I did it seriously, and I analyzed it and explained what, what the principles were and stuff, and, and it still has legs. People are still discovering this somehow, despite YouTube's algorithms apparently <clears throat> i'm gonna do i should do an episode of the chore duty and i'm not saying i will but where i i analyze the video there's a, a cartoon out there from roughly 1938 it is a send-up of snow white and the seven dwarves done by of all people bill uh oh, i can't think of it bob clampett from warner brothers it's called Coal Black and the Seven Dwarves. <clears throat> and it is essentially Snow White Goes to Harlem. And you know what's up? This <laughs> it is the ultimate race lift. Not only that, I'm legit, you know what? I'm gonna do it legit. I'm gonna explain the history behind that project. I'm gonna explain why they do what they do. And I'm going to point out the references. I should honestly do this. I will make this a project. I will, put, and it's considered one of the seven naughty Warner cartoons that Cartoon Network will not touch. Warner Brothers will not release. Poor old Jerry Beck tried to save it, and they just they just absolutely refuse to admit it exists. That. I'm going to find a copy of that, and I'm going to make a video, and I'm going to post it, and I'm just going to infuriate everybody because that is what they want with No White and the Seven Dorks. They are so determined to remake the entire world in their own twisted image because they absolutely refuse to accept the existence of a god that is not them. That is what this all comes down to. And I will absolutely do that if I swear to you. And I will not release it. I will not release it unless, yes, I'm going to ransom the entire world. If Disney actually releases <laughs> No White and the Seven Dorks, put that diversity hire parade on film and get it out in the theaters, I promise you I will release Toe Black and the Seven Dwarfs and I will put it right on YouTube. I will put it on Rumble. I will put it on Facebook. I will put it on Instagram. I will go out and start a Patreon if I have to to get this thing out there so that the whole world can see shot for shot how closely it tracks to what they finally release. Guaranteed they will not be able to resist themselves. They must push their own racist worldview. And this, and to show that nothing changes, this was filmed 90 years ago, 85 years ago. 38, 23? Yeah, 85 years ago. This is 85 years ago, and guarantee you it will come out shot for shot remake, and they won't even realize they've done it. Well, I'm scared. Um, you should be. Be afraid. Be very afraid because you've ticked off the smartest guy in the room. And I mean, not just this room. I mean, video all y'all's rooms. I'm the smartest guy in all y'all's rooms. Understand that. Don't forget it. I'm Don't smart. Forget it. I'm yes, smart. I'm not saying you're an idiot. I'm not even I mean, saying you're you a moron. Really applied. <clears throat> I'm the smartest just, person I'm in the room. <sighs> See what I deal with? You understand? Comparatively speaking, okay, the smartest man in the room can come in and make the most vile, reprehensible statement because it's going to sound vile and reprehensible to you, but it's going to make absolute sense because you're not quite as smart as he is. It's not saying you're stupid. It's saying you're not as smart as I am. I am smart. But here's the other thing. <clears throat> I will admit I'm the smartest guy in the room. 99.9% .9 oh, of the rooms on this planet, I would be the smartest guy in. Are we done? Elon Musk is not as smart as I am. 
He's just smart. Well, people always just, has the bigger head. He's here. just no, no, no. This has nothing to do with my ego. It has to do with the fact that Elon Musk has more does not have the moral turpitude that I have. So he goes out and he makes up some phony baloney little scheme to take advantage of tax rebates and tax subsidies so that he can build Tesla into this multi-billion dollar corporation and he manages to use that to buy Twitter and he's going to turn it into X and he's just going to remake the whole world and his whole wide image because now Elon Musk wants to be God and not just the people who make no white in the seven doors. Okay. You know what? You're welcome. Let's, let's talk you, about, you let's want talk about anti, somebody way I important. Let's talk about somebody way important. We are. Me. That is that is way me. bigger than Elon and the yes, snow me. blow and me. You. That's okay. Me. Let's talk about somebody more important. Well, okay. My wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell her you said that too. I will absolutely <laughs> bust your chops on that one, pal. Lousy. You're going to suffer too. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, we got some sad news. About somebody more important here, okay? Mm -hmm. As you guys may or may not have known, our childhood has been kicked in the nuts because of uh, Mr. Paul Rubens, uh, a.k.a. Pee Wee Herman, has passed away at 70, where he secretly battled cancer for six years. Um... Final jerk of the curtain. Sorry. I mean, I'm sad to see him pass, but uh, let's be honest. Not exactly the the kind of guy you leave your kid alone with. Okay. <sighs> Didn't know there was a Paul Rubens room over at Neverland, right? Oh my goodness. Come on. That. That's the schedule, but that's, that's just somebody sick-minded that thought it would be fun. Yeah, Paul Rubens. No. I, so. I personally will miss you, Paul Rubens. You was part of my childhood. I love Pee Wee's Playhouse. I love the movies. I, I just totally forgot you was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but I watched it here recently. Mm. 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 Best death ever. Um, oh, that sounded... Second best. Yeah. You'll I did not mean that. that. Yeah, you did. You made every word. That was best death ever. No, no. Second best because Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Oh my goodness! I miss that you. That was dude. the best. Death We're going ever. on. But well, let's 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 get yes, less. Gosh, yes, less. By all mean, less. Oh, okay. We're going to get right into some tarnishment. We still got two reviews, and i got to tell you about a new project I'm working on. Go ahead. Uh, A24 type of movie is on the way of Barney. That's right, Barney the Purple Dinosaur is getting apparently a very special treatment. Uh, I blow you, you suck me. I, I don't know. We're all freaking filthy. I don't know what kind of movie this is going to be. They just said that it's an A24 type, and A24 has makes really interesting horror films that A24 done doing pretty good, honestly. They do pretty good for themselves. They made some really good movies, honestly. But A24 ain't nothing. It ain't shit. I mean, sure. But I don't know they how Blumhouse. They eat nothing. I don't know how Barney is actually going to. Like, I, did, kind of, like, I did see Five Nights at Freddy's is coming out. Yes. Now, if we do Barney meets Jurassic Park at Five Nights at Freddy's, hey, I'm in. Oh, that would be. That would be pretty cool. That'd be better than an A24 style angsty. That's what we need. Barney with angst. That's exactly what we need. Yeah. Anyway, the movie will star Daniel Kulia, Kulia, whatever. I uh, even explain that. You go ahead. But yeah, he's he's going to be in the movie. You know him from Black Panther and uh, Get Out. Oh, and my favorite, my favorite movie ever. Nope. 
If you have never seen Nope, you gotta watch Nope. Don't say no. Anyways, yes. Sorry like that. I'm done. I'm just waiting for him to finish fangirl. Also, right more really bad stuff. Uh, Vin Diesel is doing a Rock'em Sock'em robot movie. Which, <clears throat> I'm going to be honest, they already did that. And it was a really good movie. It's called Real Steel. Actually... Rod Serling already did that in an episode of The Twilight Zone, and it was much better than Real Steel was. Hmm, I don't, I don't um, see that. I, I'm not even going to tell it. You just research it. Hmm. There's yeah. an episode, it's like episode, it's in season one or two, I think. I can't remember. Hmm. Anyway. Well, not that one. That's a new one for me. But about a guy who's trying to, all the, in the future, all the boxing is robotic because it's so violent and everything. And Rod Sterling always had a weakness for boxing anyway for some insane reason because that's why he wrote Requiem for a Heavyweight, which was like one of the best boxing movies of all time. And then, uh, so anyway, this manager's got this little broken down bot and the bot just can't make it in the rain. The bots, bots are made to basically look past for humans so they could still maintain the illusion. So when the manager's bot goes down, he can't afford not to have this fight, so he has to climb into the ring with a robot. Wait a minute, I think I have seen it. You have seen it. You just did, you just forgot about it. Yeah. Because it didn't connect. I did, yeah. yeah and I have and that, it. Is, that exceeds Rock'em Sock'em Robots in every way, shape, and form, including Vin Diesel's entire career. That is true. That is true. You can only see Vin Diesel punch a punch a car in the nose so often before you just get tired of it. <laughs> sure, sure. <sighs> um. Anyway, in other news, if you're a big fan of the Batman animated series that came out in 1992, mm -hmm. something like that, um, well, guess what? Mm -hmm. It is being continued in comic book form. That is right. Comic book form is is back, and there, even the artwork is supposed to match the 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 way the animated series was, and everything. And uh, it's going to basically be a re and continue of the series, just through comic books. Nope. You said it. Nope. 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 You cannot trust DC Comics to handle any of its properties right now. Or Marvel. That's true. That's if true. that is the reason everybody gave up on American comic books is reading crappy manga now, even though I'm telling you, manga is the exact same six setups and the exact same 12 plot lines over and over ad nauseum. Sometimes with pink things, sometimes with blue things, and sometimes with furry things. It's all the same. It's all the same. <laughs> It's all the same. Attack on Titan was the most overrated thing to come out of Japan since Godzuki. No, I'm done with it. Done. Done. Yes, I told you. Done. Remember, smartest man of the world. Anyways. I can't wait for, for Disney to just hit the rocks and have to sell Marvel off to somebody who actually gives a crap about character development and storytelling. Russo Brothers. What? Let's bring the Russo Brothers in this crap. Wait, was it the Russo Brothers? Yeah, it was the Russo Brothers. They're the ones that did the best ones. You're thinking Marvel movie studio. I'm thinking Marvel comic books. Marvel characters. Oh, corporate. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. My bad. But yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. We'll see if we'll see if Disney actually actually gets sold to Apple or not. But but if Apple really really wants to go bankrupt again, again, I remember. Hey, Pepperidge Farm is the only one who remembers. I remember. Yeah, I remember Bill Gates having to go in and bail them out too, so he wouldn't wind up getting running afoul of the United States government. Didn't know that, did you? Yeah, Bill Gates got rich off of Apple's iPhones and iPads and iPods. 
he had a taste of all of that. That's why he's buying so many hundreds of thousands of West Coast farmland to take them out of production so everybody will starve and eat his lab-grown meat. Because it's not like Bill Gates has any natural meat anyway. Damn it. There's a reason I'm on the right-hand side here. Ain't nobody to the right of me. Oh my God. Okay, moving on. Do you, do you let's, let's, let's move on to your son. I'm on this. Let's move on to your son. We're already 20 minutes <laughs> into been, this. We still have to go every I still have to say. I still have to make an announcement. Okay, okay. Get on with your get your uh, newsy stuff over with. Anyways, yes. as we move on. For those of you who is looking forward to certain movies that is coming. Uh, you might have to wait a little bit longer. Here is the list of movies that is being put on the way because of the strike. So, Craven the Hunter. Yes. The uh, trailer just came out like a month ago or something like that. And now it's, it. now it's being uh, delayed. delayed. I <sighs> Ghostbusters Afterlife 2 is also being delayed. Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse is also being delayed. A Apparently, a new Karate Kid movie, which, oh yeah, that's right, they are making one. I forgot about that. It's being delayed. Cobra Kai. Uh, and uh, Dune 2. Also, Aquaman will also be uh, somewhere in the fall of next year. Ghostbusters Afterlife 2, Spider-Man, Spider-Verse 3, Karate Kid 7, Dune 2, Fans 0. I have so few craps to give about. Even Afterlife 2, and I liked Afterlife. And even Spider-Verse 3, I liked Spider-Verse. I liked the first one better than the second one. But we'll talk about that in the Turtles review that we're going to do. Well, that's all I got that's it for the news? Okay. All right, so it's... They've got me ranting and raving. Let me go ahead and make this announcement real quick. I have, I'm currently working on a project over at Substack. It's called Pencil Sharks Cup. And basically, I'm trying to get myself back in the routine of writing again. So instead of going to Twitter and writing 15, 20 tweets a day for poor old Chris to sit there and have to keep up with, then I'm just spending about an hour, hour and a half every day just do, writing a little thing, looking at the news items of the day, uh, doing some analysis. I'm hoping to do some, actually get started back on fiction here at some, some point. But just keep an eye out. It's at uh, oh, excuse me, pencilsharp.substack.com. Substack is going to keep trying and trying and trying to get you to sign up for a paid subscription because they really need the money over there. And it's, I think it wound up defaulting back to $8 a month. I probably won't see a dime of it anyway, but you can subscribe for free. It's over at pencilsharp.substack.com. Probably about three or four times a week, something to get posted. And the main thing is going to be called the Daily Constitutional. That's where I take all the crap the world puts out and put it right onto your team, onto your screen. So, and it, it will go to your email, so you don't have to necessarily remember to go to the website. You can just check your email. Like, I know all of you check your email on a daily basis. Either way, it's free. You don't have to pay nothing. Just sign up and get, get my loving kindness in your inbox, all up in your inbox. But I'm not paying support. <laughs> so, so that's that's that pencil charge cap. So, let's we'll see what I actually get done with that. How long I keep up with that? I've made it a week and a half so far. So we'll see. You're gonna have to upload the the, the reminder on Facebook so I can post it and stuff. I can get around to it. I think I remember to put it on. I don't know if it's Twitter or X or what in the world it is right now. It's X. I'm trying to put it on, trying to include things on Truth, too. So I'm still trying to figure out how to post the, our videos to one place and then have YouTube and everybody pick it up. I think I got it figured out, but we'll see. 
We'll see what happens. Anyway, that's enough of the shop talk. Let's get back over to our review stuff. So instead of doing a couple of uh, aftermaths on this, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into a couple of movie reviews. Chris here has seen Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion. For some reason, I cannot retain this thing. But give him a quick breakdown of the new Haunted Mansion from Disney. Chris. The Haunted Mansion, based off of the famous ride at Disney, this movie is amazing. Like, seriously, this, there's actually a plot. There's actually thought that was put into this. I kid you not. They actually did a good job. I'm sorry. I know this sounds crazy, but when it comes to Disney here lately, it's like, eh, you know? And they don't have anything good or smart that has been coming out here lately. Yeah, the Disney name is Poison. Actually. Yeah, it, it's, it's bad. That's why I was shocked of how good this movie was. I had a good time. The jokes were hilarious. The ghosts were fun. The actors were actually entertaining. The plot. Oh my goodness. There's like so much plot and twists and turns that you're just like, wow, I didn't actually see that coming. The, 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 it's just, oh, amazing movie. You will have a good time to see this movie. And because of the way I thought before going into this, to see this movie is uh, the reason why I think the movie hasn't hit its mark with everybody as for right now, because you know, everybody's watching Ninja Turtles, Barbie, Oppenheimer. This movie's kind of getting overlooked because you know, eh. plus not to mention the last haunt dimension movie with Eddie Murphy. Eh. It left a kind of a bad taste, you know. You think this one's got the legs to become like a cult? This would be ironic as I get out. So let me let me try and get into this without giving too much spoilers here. So, first of all, this family goes to New Orleans. They get this house, and they didn't even last a night, right? So they go ask help. From a priest played by Owen Wilson, of all people, who goes and finds a guy who invent who he is a science nerd, like he knows way too much about tech and and life and things like that. He's very quiet, very like he's always has his head down as he presents himself, like he's like you know. Don't look at me. I don't want people to look at me type of deal. His story is very dramatic, but also wild as hell. Because, because of what happens to him, he invents a camera that actually catches souls. But he's been to every haunted place in the, in the world and never caught a thing. So they come to him and say, hey. Can you you might be able to help us with this. In the trailer, there is a thing where he's about to step into the house, and she's like, "Listen, you got to understand something. When if you set foot in this house, it will change your life." That is a big plot of the entire movie, because you find out if you set foot in this house, once you leave, you taking a ghost with you, okay? And the ghost will haunt you until you come back to the house. Just, just, it's actually really cool. <laughs> so everybody's warned before they go into this house. So basically the house itself was uh, the guy who lived there. He lost his wife and ended up having a seance for, to try to get in touch with his wife for I forgot how many years he did this, but the thing is he never closed the this gateway from ours to theirs. So every time he had a seance, a ghost would come through. But he would never close close up the door. Which if you do seance or do the Ouija board, everybody knows you're supposed to close what you started, you know? 
I don't know exactly the details on how that works. I never wanted a fool with that, but it makes mm. sense. So that's why this house has so many ghosts. Now, time to find out that there's more to this story because the guy before him that owned the house was a psychopath. You may know this ghost as the ghost that carries his head in like this hat case thing, mm -hmm. which is one of the famous ghosts on the right. Well, he's the main villain. Even all the other ghosts are afraid of him. So, in order to solve all of these problems, the team that is now kind of stuck because they can leave the house, but they take ghosts with them. They try to gather all the information on each ghost to try and solve everything that is going on here. So that's basically the main plot. Again, there's a bunch of twists, turns, and everything that you're like, wow, okay. The cast, you have Rosario Dawson. You have Owen Wilson. You have Tiffany Haddish, which... Eh, you have Jamie Lee Curtis. You have Danny DeVito, who is honestly the... He was fun. He was fun in this movie. He's always the best He's part of the movie. And honestly, the main character, I can't remember his name. I, I, that was super I, effective. I know. I'm sorry. I remember everybody else. I've seen him in a few things. I just can't remember who he is. But anyway, this movie is just wild, crazy, and it is hilarious as well. Um, there's, It's not scary. There's no, like, horror scenes or bloody scenes. It's just, you know, your typical, oh, these are ghosts who are just, like, you know, kind of... It's, it's a goofy Disney film. Yeah, it's kind of like Casper, the live-action Casper movie, you know? It's kind of like that. <laughs> Actually, it reminds me of that a whole lot in this movie. Um, but, yeah, like... The plot, there's, like, whoever wrote this did a really good job. I mean, this movie was complete fun, and there was, there was, just, was well told that it shocked me, again, because of the tarnish pain of what Disney has been spitting out over the last few years of just why. This is... A really good movie. I really suggest you all go see it. Haunted Mansion. Definitely worth seeing. Okay, so rule of five here. Zero being not even drunk. Five's full price. Where would you put it, Chris? It's five o'clock. Five. Yeah. It's five o'clock strikes again. So it's, listen, you can say that, but listen, I'm telling the truth. I see what I like and I see what I don't like. If it's If there's potential there... I will give it a complete five because these are movies that I believe. One, these are movies that I think is great for an audience to go and watch. Also, these are the movies that, you know, I'm getting tired of everybody saying that theaters are dying off because nobody wants to go see this movie or this movie. I don't believe that, and I will refuse to believe that. And this is one of those movies that I believe is why the theater should still be strong. It's a good movie for you to take your family or friends and just... That was going to be my next question. Is this really family-friendly like classic Disney, or is this good for your fams like modern Disney is, where you need to be at least 13 year old, years old and have all the discretion of an 8-year-old to watch it? I mean, maybe like... Nobody under 10 should go see it because they'll see these ghosts and probably be scared no matter what, even though the movie itself is not actually scary. But, and and the main, like, uh, go-to of this movie is when you let somebody go, it is okay. That it's okay to be okay. You know? It's really a good message, too. Thank you. But all in all, you'd, you would recommend this. Oh, yeah. Saturday night with a date. This would actually be a good date movie, you think? Oh, or, yeah. You would laugh. There's, like, the jokes are actually really, really good. Um, especially Danny DeVito. 
And honestly, Owen oh, Wilson knocked it out of the park in this one. Yeah, he did a good job. Owen oh, Wilson doesn't exactly have the best reputation with me for, for high quality stuff. But yeah. And again, I never got into Dumb and Dumber either. But. Okay, so that's that's our that's your take on Haunted yes. Mansion. So you would recommend it? I do. He gives it a thumbs up. I still won't see it because it's still a Disney film and Disney, Disney anymore. Look, let's get off the Haunted Mansion for a minute because it's not their fault. Disney right now is in the same position they were er, they were in like 78, 79, 80. Okay. Yeah. They're in that position where everything they do is box office poison. They cannot get a break. Nobody trusts the brand anymore. It's remember in 78, 79, 80, they had made the black hole, and I believe they made the black cauldron. One black hole was a live action sci-fi thing, and the black cauldron was an animated movie. Nobody liked either one of them. They both stank stank up the theaters and slunk off, mainly because they had Star Wars to watch. The uh, right now Disney is in that exact same position where their brand means nuts because people know if they go see a Disney f- film, it's not going to be entertaining. It's going to be essentially preaching. It's going to be a sermon on the the sexy new religion of acceptance and inclusion and diversity and all the other crap. All the stuff we were given, no white and the seven dorts crap about. The, the, it's going to be a diversity hire the movie part 14. Okay, it's what it's going to be. Nobody trusts Disney anymore. Disney has not gotten to that point where they get that one project that serves as the turnaround point. Okay. The last time it took, not even a joke, it took the gummy bears to change Disney's fortunes around. The Gummy Bears was the first of their television animation unit to actually get some traction on Saturday mornings in syndication. That was that opened the door for DuckTales, which opened the door for Res- Chippendale Rescue Rangers, which opened the door for Tales. Suddenly, the Disney afternoon became a thing again, and that's what led us into the into the nineties, and that's what led us into the animation renaissance with the Little Mermaid and the Lion King and. Beauty and the Beast, and all these things. That led into Pixar with the Toy Story movies and Monsters, Inc., and that just led into this new modern golden age of animation. Disney's going to have to get back to its roots. It's going to have to do what it did back in the around 1980. It's going to have to take all of its dead wood and all the jerks with all the bad ideas, and it's going to have to jettison them out of Spaceport somewhere, and it's going to have to start from scratch with hungry, young, new talent. That is something that Hollywood is desperate for right now. The whole industry is desperate for talented young creators. Okay, there's plenty of young people in Hollywood. That is true, but, they, but there aren't very many talented ones, and there are very, very few creators. They would rather take an existing property, crap all over it, and say, "Look what I did," and nobody wants that crap. Nobody. So. And so it, the point being, Haunted Mansion could be a, a good film. You said it was a really good film. You gave it a five. You said, you'd even say it's worth a Saturday night with your date. But it's got that Disney stink on it right now. And just by rote, people ignore it. So people are dismissing it out of hand. That's why I was asking earlier, do you think this could be a cult film and that it comes back kind of like what? The Sandlot did, or a Christmas Story, or some of these other older films, where it's going to tr- it's going to start getting exposure just because it's so cheap to air, and they're just going to show it over and over, and people can start getting into it. And like, hey, it was actually a pretty good movie. I would say that it will probably get better range when it hits Disney Plus during October, when everybody's like, oh, there's that movie I didn't go watch. I'll watch it and try that, and be like, wow, this is a good movie, mm-hmm. and then that's how it goes. Here's the thing. I know Disney has this stain to it, this huge stain, but I think some somewhere in the creative process, you also have to you also have to kind of look at it in a different way. Like for instance, Marvel stuff, 
has been really bad here lately. Except for Guardians of the Galaxy 3, but I don't say that that was good because of it being Disney. I think it was good because you had a very talented person behind that movie, Mr. James Gunn, who knew what he was doing and cared about his characters. Which is a rare, rare yeah. thing. In so sometimes you just got to look at the studio and be like, ah. but yet this person, it's kind of like if Christopher Nolan did a Marvel movie, you're going to sit there and be like, Christopher Nolan's doing this? Now, if Christopher Nolan were to do a Captain America movie... Exactly. Because he would get into the the meta-analysis of it and stuff. That's what happens when you have, again, talented... Christopher Nolan's not young anymore, but he's a creator. You need the talented creator types back in Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, you, you brought up Marvel and, and how it's been sucking wind here lately. We've people have been talking about phase four. It's finally ended. They're into phase five now. It doesn't matter. Nobody's paying attention to Marvel. They're now talking about a full scale reboot where they're just going to jettison the entire project and start over with. See, a, I don't like that. Stop doing reboots. Just do it better. If you're going to continue these, do it better. Because if you do reboots, trust me, that's not going to do anything. All it's going to do is just mess up everything and get confusing people out there who's like, wait, what? I mean, I've been in order since the beginning of time now, which am I wrong? It's like you have to watch everything to understand what's going to happen in this one mm -hmm. <clears throat> for so many years now. And now you're just going to say, oh, these don't exist, but we're rebooting it. It's like yes. that's going to make fans really confused. And, new and really as angry. Well. It's going to make really angry, too, because that's exactly what happened to the Star Wars Extended Universe. Because yeah. that once when Kathleen Kennedy decided in her infinite wisdom that only her stuff would count, her and the stuff George Lucas did counted, that threw out all the Timothy's on stuff. So we would see no Grand Admiral Thrawn. We would see no none of these other secondary characters and stuff that Mara Jade. We wouldn't get any of these characters, these plot lines, these storylines, they just all got flushed down the toilet because one lady said so. All it takes is somebody to take charge of Lucasfilm and say, you know what? Never mind. Reverse that. We'll, we'll throw her stuff out and we'll keep everything else. And then you will just hear, it, it'll be like millions of voices suddenly crying, suddenly being silenced and then suddenly crying out. It'd be like the exact opposite of the... Uh, the destruction of Alderaan. It's, There's your nerd cred reference. But. It's it's kind of like, like you got to know and watch out for certain things. Like the, there's a new Miss Marvel movie coming out. We know that's going to bomb. That's poison. Yes. But if that movie was being announced and you had somebody like James Gunn, Christopher Nolan, somebody with Tim Burton, even if somebody with credit that you know, it's like man, you know, I really love their work. It doesn't even have to do that. It just has to show some promise. Yeah. People, like I said earlier, people know that if they go to a Marvel movie, they're getting a sermon in the new woke religion. Yeah. Okay. This is the new, this is your God now. People are tired of seeing that. Yeah. Let's com compare and contrast. We've done this before when we did the Afterlife review, Ghostbusters Afterlife. We compared and contrasted Ghostbusters Afterlife with Ghostbusters 2016. Okay, Ghostbusters 2016 was a woke, hot mess. It was an absolute disaster, horribly toxic, sexist as all get out, just misogynist, not even misogynistic, it's just, it was just bad because they got on their soapbox and had to preach, look how much better we are than the white guys, which just indicates they're communicating their inferiority. They're showcasing their inferiority with that. Compare that to Afterlife, which did have a diverse cast. It did have the diversity. It did have the different representations. It had that stuff, but it had the story first. An entertaining story is what people are desperately craving right now, and that's why we're going to get into our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Mutant Mayhem review. Because I went into it expecting very, very little. 
because I've never been a tur. I've, I have, I'm not going to say I've never been a Turtles fan, but I'm not a Turtles fanatic. Okay, he's the Turtles guy. I'm not. That's why I'm doing this review. Ho oh, oh, ho! You did Haunted Mansion because you saw Ed. I'm going to do this when you can pipe in where you need to. But here's the thing: I have been hearing off and on and off and on about. The Turtles movie, the Mutant Mayhem movie, doesn't it look terrible? Oh, they've got, they've got trans in there. They've April looks like crap. Look at that body. Ugh, what, what, what's the design like here? How pathetic! It's they're all diversity hires. There's representation. Nobody's going to want to see this. I'm telling you right now, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem has legitimized Seth Rogen in my eyes. I had. An opinion of zero of Seth Rogen leading up to this film. Same. Watching this film, oh my goodness, it it's a breath of fresh air. The representation is still there, yes, but it's not rubbing your nose in it. It's not like you're a naughty white boy and you need to have your nose rubbed in your racist filth. This is a, a film that takes an honest approach to, uh, let's be honest, this franchise, if it's not 40 years old yet, it's getting there fast. Because I believe it started around 83, 84, somewhere around there. That's when the book, the comic books first started. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman. Oh, no, wait. No, that was when the TV 84, series started. 84. Yeah, it's 84. That's what I was saying. They're coming in on their 40th anniversary. But every generation, this is now the third generation to reimagine the Turtles. Yes. Okay. And it's not even, it's not even that. It's not even the third reimagining of it. You had Eastman and Laird, their version, the the, the actual version that was supposed to be a parody of X Men and New Teen Titans. Is what they were supposed to be. Okay, was it their fault that somebody came up with the radioactive adolescent black belt hamsters right after it to parody the parody, which lets you know the whole thing jumped the shark. But then there was the second version, which was the Playmates version, which was the, the fun cartoon version that came out in the late 80s with Cowabunga and, and Pizza Power and all that other stuff. And then they did another version in the, the live action movies that oh. you that you adore. Oh. So it, that those came yes. out in the early 90s and, and then they just keep reimagining them. And then Nickelodeon acquires the rights somehow. Nickelodeon just buys the rights for it outright. So now it's a Paramount project, and they reimagine it for Nickelodeon, and this is the second reimagining for Nickelodeon, okay? I'm not going to bore you with the plot. Every Turtles movie is the exact same plot, although they go get into a little more detail of it here, but it's an origin story, okay? Ugh. I know, everybody goes, ugh, for origin stories. But this, honestly, this movie is not made for Turtles fans. This movie is made for kids and for people who have heard of the Turtles, but don't really pay a lot of attention. Turtles purists, Turtles purists are going to have a really sharp curve they're going to have to overcome here. They're going to enjoy this film because that's not my April. That's not the Turtles. They don't have any confidence whatsoever. Leo's such a wimp. He's not a leader. Why is, uh, why is Splinter so... Old, why is he portrayed so feebly, and all this other stuff? This is this is not a joke. Somebody put out Thursday before this thing released. Somebody put out that they had seen a pre-release copy. They and boy, did they just try to tank this film. They were talking about uh, April's fat. They were talking about uh, the turtles are completely not anywhere close to their characters. Uh, they're talking about Splinter was gay and was engaged in, in a gay relationship with Stinkbug or whatever whatever its name was at the end of the film. They were just tanking this film and throwing brickbats at it left and right. And everybody's like, really? This is, this is Nickelodeon? And then the movie comes out, and, and I actually see it not just with this one, but with The Beloved Wife. The beloved wife would see the ads for it because I'm a, not only a geek, I'm a dork. Okay. So Google now knows I pay attention to those things, so it shows me ads for it. But she sees the art style, and she's like, I would actually want to see that. 
Okay, that was one of the criticisms people had about this film. The artwork looks like crap. Mm -mm. The artwork looks different. It's not crap. It's not everybody's cup of tea. No. But because you can actually see marker lines, you can see the pen work, you can see, you can actually see brush strokes of paint, you can see all kinds of stuff, but it's CGI. And between Turtle, you, between you and Mayhem, and the first Spider Verse film, because the second one just dissolved into an incoherent mess because there's way too many art styles, they took the CGI tools and finally de Pixar'd it. Because if you go back to Spider Verse, and I still have that uh, poster hanging over, over his head, you, you got all these different diverse art styles, and I don't mean diverse as in, you know, modern contemporary meaning. I mean you have a wide variety of treatments of the same subject matter. I saw 2D, 3D, mm -hmm. uh, CGI, right. uh, I can't remember what the other one is. Well, complete animations. You can draw that yeah, you can paint. So yeah. there was there was a lot. But was I, it was a, okay. A with. wide variety of it, but it's they're rendered using a CGI engine. Okay, there's there's some mixed media. There's even some live action stuff that was included. The mute mayhem, because there were there are actually spoiler alert. There are scenes from Ferris Bueller in there. Oh yeah, okay. I was going with that. And it, but the thing is, they actually they didn't just throw it in because. They had the because it's Paramount. They had the rights to Ferris Bueller. They threw it in because the turtles. This is their origin story. They're 15 years old, and every 15 year old on the planet desperately wants to fit in. And these guys have these kids have been raised by their rat master in the sewer for the last 15 years, and they so desperately want to be a part of the world around them. They they're craving acceptance. Okay. They want to be accepted by the world around them, and they don't just want to be accepted. They want to be celebrated. Okay. And meanwhile, their their dad, and they come straight out and they call Splinter dad, which I'm glad to see see that happen. They call Splinter dad, and their dad Splinter keeps warning them, "No, humans are going to hate you," which is true because humans are evil scuzzbags at heart. Okay. You actually have to make an effort to overcome that. That's a different episode. Not like I haven't said it a thousand times already. But humans are scuzz bags. They're going to milk you. Okay, this lets you know it's a Nickelodeon movie because there are some words that are just inherently funny. Okay? Ooze is funny. Ooh. Scum is funny. Milk is funny. Milk is a funny word. The worst part is... Spoiler alert, they actually milk Michelangelo at one point in this film. It is the most hilarious thing because they actually realize, oh my God, Dad was right. <laughs> They're milking us. And Michelangelo is like, oh no, I'm being milked. I'm really. Michelangelo is the one who realizes he's being milked. And everybody's like, no, yes. But, but anyway, you can tell it's a Nick. You can see the Nickelodeon touches here. Like I said, they did, they depixarded this. CGI has had this long reputation of having egg-shaped eyes and smooth skin and shading, okay? Between Spider-Verse and Mutant Mayhem, we are finally getting not just a street adaptation of these tools, we're getting people, we're getting artists who are not computer artists first. You can tell in Mutant Mayhem, these people did this with, like I said, you can see the marks, marker ink, you can see the pen ink, you can see the paints, you can see the modeling, there's paper mache involved, there's all kinds of stuff, but it's all been rendered into a CGI. Is it the most, is it the most flawless CGI? Is it Pixar level CGI? No, it doesn't have to be. CGI is final. Finally, as I've been begging for five years now, finally being used as a tool and a media. Okay, so it's not just you have to know how to program a computer in order to be a, a CGI animator. 
now you can be a painter on a canvas and have it rendered into CGI. So now you're, this film, I think, is going to serve as a landmark in that it's going to finally democratize the, C, the computer animation industry. So I remember years ago when Disney, Disney actually disbanded their animated features unit with all the old animators with decades of experience, just fired them all, released them, because they're all CGI now. These guys are worthless. We're not doing ink and paint anymore. I said at the time, you people are idiots. People are idiots. You people are idiots. You're going to pay for this down the road. They're paying for it now. But the ink and painters are come, making a comeback because not because they adapted to CGI, because CGI is adapting to them and is taking their great ideas and their their different ways of looking at the world around them and are learning how to represent them. So that's why I think, I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem will wind up as one of the landmark films of animation, along with Spider-Verse. These two together are going to serve as the, boom, this is going to be one of the big spots that to remember in animation history. Things will be different, I hope, from this point forward. So, and on top of that, the story was actually pretty entertaining too. Didn't it didn't get into the woke stuff? It didn't preach. I mean, there there are different preachy things. This is not your daddy's April O'Neil. Okay, she's she's not the bubble-headed redhead that she was. The yellow jumpsuit, the cartoons. And I know there are still fanboys crying over it. Different generation, different representation. Okay. You want to adapt April O'Neil and, and make her something a little grittier, which is honestly what this film is. It's a it's a gritty reboot of the Turtles, but it does something that the other re gritty reboots fail to do. It keeps its heart and its sense of humor. And to show you just how dedicated the creators are on this, they actually caught Jackie Chan's fighting style oh, yes. with with Splinter. There is one scene towards the end. Splinter has to come in to the to rescue the boys from being milked. He has to come in and rescue them. And here's this aging old rat, and he's surrounded by all these by all these bad guys, and he's gonna have to try to fight them all off. Like he's one little rat, one old rat. What is he going to do? So they start charging at him, and he promptly goes into the Jackie style drunken master fighting style. He starts rolling around. He rolls, he actually takes a couple of punches, but he rolls with them and uses whatever's at hand to take people out. And here's the shocking part he gets stabby. Okay, this is something else I respect the heck out of this turtle's version compared to any of the others. They're not pulling punches in this one. When, who's the one with the size? Is that Raphael? I, can, yeah. I can't keep track now. Raphael has the size. He gets stabby with it. He, there's one point he leaves, his, he has to throw his side to pin somebody down, and then he, he, he goes around and he's fighting and he comes back to his side and gets them back. Donatello has the, the bow staff, Am I thinking right? I still, I, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of these guys. One of them has a bow staff. He actually uses it properly to pin somebody down, and then he leverages somebody else, and then he's using it as a fulcrum and lever to pull to throw somebody across the room, and then he's using it, and then he immediately starts spinning it to clear some space. People automatically back up. They're doing intelligent fighting styles here, and the, uh, the katana that's being used to slice back and forth by Leonardo it actually starts slicing people. People have to respect the blade and get out of the way or they're going to get hurt. And that's exactly what Splinter does during his fight. He, he winds up getting hold of the boys' weapons and he uses those weapons for deadly effect. And, and all the while doing it as Drunken Master and it is, I gotta admit, it was impressive as all get out. Uh, some interesting subordinations of the, the way these movies usually progress. All the bad guys but one, spoiler alert, all the bad guys but one 
actually take the turtle's side towards the end, and they all wind up fighting together to take the big bad guy down. Who, other spoiler alert, it ain't Shredder. Not yet. But it's... <laughs> this was actually fun, and I think, like I said, I've, I've got to rethink Seth Rogen because I had very little opinion of him before because he always seemed like he was one of those fart joke guys and just somebody who I just couldn't care about. But this this show, Seth Rogen, not only takes the... He said he's been a fan for since he was a kid. It shows. He really is passionate about this. He really cares. Yes, there's the representation, but that's okay. He's interpreting... The, this is his interpretation of the Turtles, and it works because he concentrated on the story and the characters instead of his precious message. And as a result, on this roll of five, the roll of five, uh-oh, I'm giving Newton Mayhem four and a half. I can't quite give it a five because I don't think it's a date movie. It's a kid's movie. I can't say I'd... I would, I would give it a 4.85. That's, that's as far as I go. 4.85 out of 5 because... On the other hand, I did take my wife to it, so five. <laughs> I, a, I took my wife on a date to it. Oh, yes, it's it a five. It's a five. It's a five. This, and I just said that ten minutes ago, too. So. Uh, any, any quick thoughts you want to add on, Chris? Because we're already I mean, an hour into this, and both of our butts are asleep. It is, it is such a good movie. I had so much fun. The, they actually got teenagers to do the voices for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Which is incredible. And they did so good. The jokes are hilarious, but sometimes you have to listen real close because there's like an action sequence going on, but they're telling the joke, and it's hilarious, but you'll miss it because there's so much going on in the scene. But it it's this, very well done. Yeah, this is another one of those films where there's so much detail, you're going to have to watch it a second. Yeah, and you, you really do just catch everything. And as for Seth Rogen, like, yeah, he's one of those, and I, that's why I was like, I don't know if I want to watch this because he did it, but it shows that he was a true fan of the Ninja Turtles. He didn't even give himself a big part in a movie. He did a voice for one, uh, either Bebop or Rocksteady, one of them, and he had like a, a few lines, but that's it. He wasn't like a big part of the movie, which I totally respect. Because if you care about the project, you're not, you know, sometimes think, you don't have to be. I think he played the warthog, whichever one that one is, because I think John Cena was the rhino. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. yeah, John uh, Cena's in the film, and nobody's talking about it. So. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot of famous people in this movie. <laughs> um, this It was the art style, beautiful, very well made. I did not care about what, like, what April looked like. Uh, I mean, did I notice it? Yes. But... Did I care? No, not really. Cute um, queen, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy, she comes by a that. title. She comes by. It is a Nickelodeon. You're going to see green fluid somewhere. So yeah, you, you'll get the. I just fluid. I love the fact that she became a YouTube meme and everything else because of the whole puking, and they showed that, and I'm just like, <laughs> that's the way. Yeah, that's 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 exactly that's what's exactly going to happen. What happens. Yeah, that's, um, what so, that's what social media does best. It humiliates me. Um, I had a whole lot of fun watching this movie. I would like to watch it again. Um, I would probably even own it because I, I'm a big fan of the Ninja Turtles. I love the live action movies, even the third one that everybody's like, eh, but I actually like that one too. Those are my like go to movies if I ever had to. I, I the the other animated movies that came out before this one. Like the Batman versus Ninja Turtles, I loved it. Uh, they did one where it was just called TMNT, and it was good. But eh, you know, it also had kind of felt like Scooby Doo ish a little bit, but it was still good. But this one, whew, this one was really really fantastic. So yeah, there'll probably be some Ninja Turtle fans that be disappointed. I was not. I loved it. And can't wait to see the sequel if they get around to it. So, yes. As for the scoring on this movie. 
Mr. Five O'Clock here has, has to pretend like he's it, not, <laughs> be calling him Mr. Five O'Clock. He's going to feel obligated not to give it a five, but he really, really wants to give it a six because he loves it that much. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Look at him. Just I zoom hate, in on that. I scene. hate that he does this to me. Yes, I will give this movie a five. five. He gives it a five. So Let's we see. average it out of the This is one of those rare films where we average out of the five. We both agree. This is a this is this is a film that punched way way above its weight class. Yes. So, so <laughs> let's just wrap it because, we're, like I said, our our butts are asleep right now. We're an hour into this recording session. Five and five, five and five on turtles, and Chris gave us haunted mansion a five, and I get still give Disney a big fat zero for being a bunch of googly boos. But uh, well, I mean, of all the <laughs> the list of like. Stupid stuff that they do. One of one of their turds have to be good. So, not but to mention was one. The, every, in in every turd, a corn kernel must appear. But there's your sewage reference. Oh, and don't forget Disney. Don't think I forgot about the my blackmail, my literal blackmail. You release no no white in the Seven Dwarfs. I will release cold black in the Seven Dwarfs just to rub your nose in it. And don't forget, if you like that, you're going to like Pencil Sharp's Cup over at pencilsharp.substack.com. It's it's worth every penny you're not going to pay for it. So, until next time, I'm Spike. I'm Chris. And y'all keep geeking out. Yeah!